All right, today we're looking at Unity, Unity 3D. So let's get our Unity Hub open and let's see how quickly we can open up one of these projects. FPS, FPS, three, two, one. i7 versus i9, 16 gigabytes RAM versus 32 gigabytes RAM, 5300M versus 5500M. And you saw actually the i7 with the base model just beat out the i9, loading up a level. Let's see the stats. We're going to launch this game. Right now, let me mute the sound. Mute the sound here. We can see uh, we are getting around 400 frames a second on the right. And yeah, whoa, is that real? We're getting 440 frames a second on the left. And it's bopping up and down, but it's going between 360 to 420 on the right. So I don't know what's going on, but the i7 is actually beating out the i9. I'm just going to launch Intel Power Gadget. The i9 is pulling in more watts of power. We're getting 22 to 26 watts on the i7, whereas the i9 is pulling in 28 to 35 watts of power. Frequency wise, this one's going 3.4 and this one's going 3.7. So perhaps because the i9 is needing more watts, it leaves less watts to the GPU. And when we're shooting, we're getting 380 on the left and 300. It's all over the place, to be honest. It's 350 to 400 on the right. Try jumping up and down. Yeah, we did this game. To be honest, you're not gonna kill the PC on this, but let's just see how long a build and run will take. i9 versus i7. So looking at the fans, we can see that the i9's fans are ramping up slightly, ever so slightly faster than the i7's fans. And it looks like the i9 has completed the build slightly faster. Fans wise, they are both going around the same sort of levels. We're getting 4,000 on the right and 4,100 on the left. Do it one more time, see what's going on. And this time around the i7 on the rebuild, just ever so slightly beat out the i9. So I gotta say, uh, Unity performance, it's pretty much neck and neck. This one's the 32 i9 5500M, eight gigabytes RAM graphics. And this is the i7 16 gigabytes RAM, four gigabytes 5300M graphics. And for this uh, silly project, it's pretty much exactly the same. All right, we are in the world of Unreal, Unreal Engine. And there's actually something weird going on because I'm just downloading, I'm just downloading the shooter game example. They're both on the same percentages, it's all good. But the fans on the i9 5500M is at 5000 RPMs, whereas the fans on the i7 is 4350. Power levels wise, you can see right here, pretty obvious. The i9's pulling 12 watts and the i7 is pulling 10 to 11 watts. Now, we're gonna do something cool. We're gonna open this brand fresh project and we're gonna compile the shaders, everything all at the same time. So three, two, one, let's go. Over here, we're pulling in 41 watts. On the left, the i7 is only drawing 38 watts. So we're getting more power draw on the i9. Look at that, an extra five watts worth of power. i7 is ahead. Boom, shakalaka, look right there. The i7 has actually launched Unreal Engine faster than the i9. So now it's the shader game, both compiling shaders. i7's obviously got a head start, but look at it, the i9 with its extra two cores, it's doing some damage on the shaders. So having an extra two cores does speed up the compilation of the shaders. And let's see how it affects the power. We're pulling in 31 to 32 watts on the i9 and we're pulling in 36 watts on the i7 CPU wise. But shaders over here, look, they're getting destroyed on the i9. We're down to 1,800, whereas on the i7 is still on 2,100. So even though the i7 launched the application faster, compiling actual like code and shaders, the i9 is demonstrably right there. You can see it around 10 to 20% faster than the i7. And watts wise, after the turbo boost has settled down, we're pulling in 31 to 32 watts on the i9 and we're pulling in only 30 watts on the i7. So now the i7 is king of battery life. 
However, compilation of shaders wise it is far behind. We got 300 left on the i9 and we got a thousand, three times more on the i7. All right, the i9 has now finished. It's compiled the shaders with 900 shaders to go on the i7. So there is a nice 20% performance bump in compilation of shaders on the i9. And look at it right there. This is what you wanna look at right there. Look at the watts. Now that the i9 has finished compilation, it's dropped from 30 watts of energy all the way down to 10 to 15. Whereas the i7, because it's slower, it's still utilizing that 30 watts of energy. So the i9 will have better battery life if you're constantly hitting it hard because it will complete the tasks faster, which means less battery is being used in the long haul. There you go. Message told, message received. Now both computers have finished compilation. As you can see, they're both done. What is interesting here, the i9 has finished for over a minute now and it's only pulling in, was it seven to 10 watts of energy on the CPU, but the fans are on maximum. So if you're looking for that cool, as quiet as a cucumber experience with Unreal Engine, you're not gonna get that here. Frame wise, now the shaders have been compiled and we're utilizing the graphics to the maximum capabilities. You can see that the i9 with 5500M, eight gigabytes VRAM graphics can do 51 frames a second, whereas the i7 with 5300M graphics, four gigabytes VRAM is only pulling in 43 frames per second. So you get an extra seven to eight frames a second with the 5500 graphics, seven to eight frames a second, 51 divided by 43. That's around 18% more performance on the maximum configuration versus the base configuration. Is it worth it? So I've left these guys for about a couple of minutes now and it looks like they've both settled down to using their maximum fan speeds. We got 5,650 on the i9 and 5,300 on the i7. There is no sight of them ramping down and, and it's purely down to the GPU because we're only using seven watts of energy on the i7, where we're using only eight watts of energy on the i9. So this is purely the GPU that's causing the fans to go mental. It'd be great if on MacOS, you had a low power GPU option to calm the fans down, but unfortunately you can't do that. So the next step of our journey, we're gonna hit the play button, just take a look quickly in game. Jumping up and down, we're getting 62 frames a second on the right and 59 frames a second on the left. Completely different scenery, so it's not a fair test. I'm gonna look at the ground to get them similar to what's going on. Looking at the ground and let's do a build. Three, two, one. There you have it. The i9 lighting build failed, followed by the i7 lighting build failed. Not that much in it. It's overall, I'd say they're pretty much neck and neck. Compiling shaders is faster on the i9, but fans are also noisier on the i9 with 5500M, 8 gigabytes VRAM graphics. All right, this is Maya. We're gonna be launching, what is this? Transformers Rig version two. Three, two, one, we are launched it. Do not show this message again. I don't care if it has a raise. Let's just see if it works, play. Boom, shakalaka. We have loaded the exact same model, yet they look slightly different. That's interesting. Anyway, let's go to frame. See the scrubbing on the frames. Yeah, we can see it's a bit chuggy. It's not perfect. Perfect for me. And this one's also not perfect. So it seems like they're about the same. I'm gonna hit the play button and let you guys decide how this looks. Three, two, one, go. Yowzers, some weirdness is happening with this. It used to work, I don't know what's going on. All right, these are both side by side. Let's go, animations away. You can see that frame rate wise, who's gonna get first? Boom, boom. So the 5300 is ever so slightly slower on rendering out this animation than the 5500. Will you notice that difference? Well, if you're watching this video, you probably will, but let's see, movement wise, they both feel about the same number of frames a second. It's not like 
one of them is less janky and one of them is 60 fps you're both getting around 15 to 20 frames a second i believe but there is look at that there's definitely it five percent i'd say five percent faster performance on the 5500 with eight gigabytes of vram so in activity monitor you can see it's purely just uh, the speed of the gpu so it'll be interesting to see how this guy performs with an eGPU. Will it go any faster? Let's find out. Let's go. Animations away. You can see that frame rate wise, who's going to get first? Boom. Boom. Personally, I reckon the i7 with 5,300 graphics is the one to go for. But that is my personal opinion. And that is the end of the show.